Hello and welcome to the DJ Force 10 in Conversation podcast episode 184. And my very special guest on today's show is Molly, the vocalist of the band Living Dead Girl, coming straight out of Canada. And um, they've got some tracks out right now. They've got a track called Alive, uh, which came out at the end of last year. They've got a track called Exorcism, which has just come out. And they've got a new track coming out on February the 26th called Escape. And then after that, they've got an album uh, of the title Exorcism, and that's due out around June. So please go check out this band. Um, They just sort of like came onto my horizon and absolutely love the sound the mix of sounds they've got on there uh, i kind of think uh like in this moment paramore kind of like real heavy aggressive verses and then just sort of real catchy choruses it's 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 just a great mix of styles um but do go check them out um and obviously you know listen to this interview as well so um i'm not gonna keep you much longer i'm just gonna sort of give you a little bit of news on that front so during february uh we are going to sort of ramp up um the amount of podcasts i'm releasing so i'm going to do two a week uh just for february because it is my birthday month um on february 26th i become another year older and um there's a bunch of albums being released around that time and tracks being released around that time as well. So I've been actually quite fortunate to get a lineup of guests that I'm extremely happy with. And, uh, I want to share them with you as soon as possible. Um, I intend to just do it for February. I'm not going to do like the prolonged thing like I did during the lockdown last year. Um, as I've kind of found that, that was a bit much <laughs> on that front. So twice a week should be pretty good just for this month. But I've got some absolutely fantastic guests coming up. Um, of some of the ones I've confirmed and actually done, um, I've got Epica coming up, which is a fantastic band. they got a new album due out on February 26th. Um, also, uh, just did one with DZ Death Zone. Uh, they're a band out of Australia, so that was quite cool. Um, some of you guys might be aware of them already, but um, yeah, it was fantastic chat. Um, Saxon, the legendary. I know I had Graham Oliver on the show a couple of years back, uh, but I actually got the main man, Biff Byford. Um, so that's another one to look forward to because they got a new album due out. Um, also, uh, them bloody kids fantastic guys and a fantastic new band to look out for and um, we've got them coming up and um yeah just a bunch more that i'm waiting for uh confirmation on releases and stuff like that but those are just just a taste of what i have coming up in february um and i'd like to implore everyone to um review the show rate the show subscribe if you like if you're enjoying hearing my voice with other people's voices that would be awesome um and yeah just carry on doing that because it's helping it's all good the numbers are going in the right direction on that front and it's going to be able to, I'm going to be able to attract other other guests onto the show um and sort of help these bands that are not so well known get a little bit more notice when you guys listen to them just go off go off to your streaming service or whatever however you consume your music bandcamp spotify apple music uh tidal deezer whatever however you use it um go listen to these bands because they're absolutely fantastic and i'm I'm looking for feedback as well because i'm toying with the idea of doing um like a a playlist on on one of the or a couple of the um streaming services and i'm just i want to gauge how many people will be interested in that but hit me up um i'm at dj force x on all the um socials and whatnot so um you can hit me on there and i'm i'm usually pretty um responsive to to messages and stuff because you know what am i doing right now um we're in lockdown so I'm here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. So I'm going to give you Molly from Living Dead Girl. Enjoy. <laughs> So I'd like to welcome to the show today, I have Molly from the band Living Dead Girl. Welcome, Molly. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, my pleasure. Um, How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Just, uh, you know, it's a little chilly here at the moment. I'm sure it's cold over in in Canada as well. But... (laughs) but we just oh yeah it is <laughs> yeah we just had a little bit of snow here in the uk so it's uh you know it's looking a bit white out there but it's uh it's certainly cold and we're in lockdown as well so kind of stuck indoors so that's all good <laughs> yeah cool um and how how is it over in uh in in canada at the moment is everything 
as expected or i mean we have snow up to my waist but <laughs> other than that <laughs> okay yeah we got like a couple of inches here so yeah that's nothing so that's fine <laughs> cool so um... i'm used to this by now <laughs> excellent um so yeah we're here to talk about uh your band living dead girl today uh you've had a couple of singles come out and you've got another one coming out shortly um before we get on to that um i'd like to sort of get because i've only recently discovered you um and i'd like to get like an origin story if you will yeah so living dead girl was formed by myself um about five or six years ago but we didn't actually start writing recording and releasing music until the past couple of years because basically we recorded a few demos a few eps and i never really got the sound that i was looking for i just okay. it took a lot of time of being in the studio and gaining the writing and recording experience before i figured out what ultimately i wanted it to sound like like mm -hmm. for a long time i was making music but i wasn't loving it enough to actually release it so finally when we worked with mitchell marlowe on our upcoming record i got exactly what i was looking for i was like all right third time's the charm this is like the <laughs> third album we recorded basically okay uh, we are finally ready to release it <laughs> fantastic fantastic and and the couple of singles you've got out already you released um a track called alive at the end of last year uh it's around october mm -hmm. time um and then you've just released a track called exorcism uh, yes. Now this is the track where I got on board with you guys. It was the first time I'd heard you, um, and it's exactly it's kind of it hits my kind of like um, my, my sweet spot in 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 the way of tastes of music. So I absolutely love obviously metal. New metal was my thing when I was a kid. So that kind of like heavy chunky sound, but also like the industrial side of things, the electronic side of things, and you add your own kind of like uh, spin on it as well. You've kind of got a sort of um, like kind of uh, like uh, what's I don't know what the right term is. It's not it's like you've got really like big choruses with it so it's quite aggressive yeah in that respect but then you kind of yeah, go off on a kind of like a sort of like a paramour kind of sound i guess is the sort of the nearest comparison i can think of right now i should have written down some comparisons um, <laughs> um but yeah um paramour is a good one <laughs> yeah paramour is a good one i like that one so you know was that was that the, obviously that is the sound you're going for to a certain degree but what was the sort of where do your sort of influences lie with that you know i'm obviously i'm, I'm guessing paramour might be one of them i'm just assuming here but <laughs> Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of both pop punk and like heavy industrial gothic metal. Okay. And I was having a tough time choosing between the two. Like I didn't want to be insanely heavy. Like our older music was pretty much just all screaming, super heavy. And I love that music. Don't get me wrong, but mm. it wasn't the kind of stuff that I wanted to perform. And I didn't feel like it totally suited me. Like it wasn't really true to who I am. So I wanted to add some influences of pop punk because that's like what i listened to a lot when i was younger yeah. a lot of like avril lavigne and stuff like that so i wanted to keep it heavy but still have like the attitude and the energy and keep it like really upbeat like those kind of things they only find in pop music so i didn't want to completely limit ourselves to just being super heavy super aggressive because then it's not as fun for me to perform it <laughs> yeah yeah no, and it wouldn't be as fun to listen to to be fair as well and i was going to say pop punk but i wasn't quite sure if that would be the right genre but obviously it is that's fantastic um, <laughs> um on that front but you do mix yeah, those that's styles a perfect yeah so you, but you do mix those styles so well um obviously you said you've had a lot of years of Thank kind you. of refining and finding that sound and stuff like that but um and and i'm guessing you've hit that kind of like spot now as well and you want to take it from there because it is it's it's very unique um in in the way that it does sound i mean there, there's been sort of bands that have crossed over in the past but i think your one is your, your particular sound is very unique thank you yeah and that's it, definitely what we were going for we wanted it to be kind of a risk <laughs> yeah and it's it's certainly something that like i've i've <sighs> you know after a while a lot of genres they do collide um and they do sort of come together some work some don't um i've always loved the electronic side of things um and i've got obviously a love for rock and metal as well so you know when those two things sort of work fantastic but i've heard some bands where it's just it just doesn't they they can't seem to get the right balance on there but you, yeah you balance seem to, is everything <laughs> yeah and and with your with your songs that people can now hear um I implore them to go listen to those songs. In fact, stop this interview right now and go listen to your songs. <laughs> and then if they've come back, awesome. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's brilliant. And, and you've got a new song coming out in February as well. Um, and that's called yes, Escape. <laughs> yep. And um, I'm going to be, I've already played Exorcism on my radio show. 
um and it went down very well and um i'm going to be playing escape on the next one it's not due out till the end of february is that correct yeah it's february 26th that comes out oh fantastic that's my birthday so <laughs> oh happy birthday thank you <laughs> happy uh, birthday here's a song <laughs> yeah thank you um but yeah no and it's, a, it's another great song for people to hear and I'll, I'll be playing it on my show um i'm going to be playing it in some live streams as well um because i dj i used to well i used to dj i would normally be djing nightclubs um so i do rock nights and stuff like that um and uh obviously we're closed and have been for almost a year now so um, yeah. <laughs> i've reverted to the online streaming side of things so i'll definitely be playing it in that as well and hopefully get some more people over to you um on that front um, thank you <laughs> cool absolutely my pleasure um so what like I've, i know you said you mentioned uh well you mentioned an album um uh coming up uh, as part of your sort of like i'm guessing part of your future plans but what what else have you got going on before we start talking album have you got anything else happening well, if it wasn't for a pandemic, we would have a tour being planned right now. So mm-hmm. that is off the table. <laughs> so for right now, it's just, and even music videos, music videos are pretty much impossible to do right now because yeah. you can't have any crowd shots. So that immediately eliminated most of our music video ideas. Yeah. Um, so we ha- we do have a music video shoot coming up. We finally have one single coming out that we're like, okay, we can do this with a small enough group to be allowed to film it so we do have a music video shoot coming up um we have another album photo shoot coming up this weekend for inside the vinyl uh we have the album coming out uh some more merch i'm expanding the merch line to make it into like more of a clothing line so that will be happening in the next couple months album pre-orders begin in march nice that kind of thing excellent excellent and i mean let's talk album i mean um i think it was scheduled i think i had it written down it's like around june this year you're sort of planning yes. intens- is that is that firm june or is that kind of like depending on what happens around the world at that point um or are you sticking to june as your release date we're sticking to june okay cool cool no no because a lot of bands are postponing stuff and and i, I like to hear music at this time so it's <laughs> it, yeah that's good. people need it exactly exactly so um with the um with the album what can you tell us about that is there anything you've kind of got lined up that you can tell us about or anything like that uh so the album has 11 tracks they are i'd say for the most part very heavy there is only one song that isn't isn't as fast and heavy Mm -hmm. um but everything was produced by mitchell marlowe who's worked with like in this moment new year's day all that remains star set papa roach like he's an incredible producer and he's worked with a lot of amazing artists so uh the level of production quality that you heard on alive and exorcism like the whole album's done by him it's all his work so to, to boost mitch up more than anything the whole album's amazing Amazing. (laughs) he totally killed it excellent excellent uh, so yeah, it's eleven tracks with four singles. Cool, excellent. Why well, has he got a name? Yes, the album is called Exorcism. Ex- oh, so you've oh, so you've already released the title track on that one, and uh, yeah, yeah, cool, <laughs> excellent. No, that's that's really cool. I look forward to hearing all of that because um, I'm I'm enjoying the three yeah. singles you've been sent. They got stronger and stronger as like because I listened to Alive, then Exorcism, then Escape, and you can hear that kind of progression in the sound and 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 the you know the production yeah i can't fault that guy he's 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 a very good producer so um yeah it sounds massive it's brilliant um so thank you no no worries at all so i've got a couple of questions left for you if that's all right um just some sort of ones about yourself and 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 how you sort of came into this sort of like world of music and everything um but what i would like first off is is what are your um three albums that really kind of molded who you are today oh that's a tough one (laughs) hard to (laughs) pick just three (laughs) i would definitely say let go by avril Lavigne, her first release because that was the first time i'd ever heard her the first time i'd ever heard you know like a female artist that wasn't just typical like britney spears and christina aguilera style pop like yep my introduction to Avril Beam was my introduction to females being able to sing like more rock and roll style music. Excellent. Um, so definitely that album because that kind of opened my eyes to the world of pop punk music. Um, I would say, how do I just pick one of these? I'd say probably Antichrist Superstar by Marilyn Manson too, Ooh, that's because I stumbled aco- across. Yeah, I stumbled across that when I was like nine or ten years old, and the black lipstick phase started shortly after, and then I realized it wasn't a phase. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how i got into like the really heavy 
heavy, more gothic stuff was Marilyn yeah. Manson. And then to pick a third one, I don't want to pick the same artist again, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'd say The Best Damn Thing by Avril Lavigne because she kind of changed her sound at that point, and that sound heavily influenced exorcism. Okay. Cool. Yeah, uh, something about it, it's just like that album is more like playful and fun than yeah. she had done before, and we definitely have elements of that in our album. No, that's that's really cool. I mean, those those are three solid albums on that front. Um, I I sort of mm-hmm. made, I, I usually ask this question to sort of like obviously you know educate the people that are listening to it about yourself and but as also to go back and listen to these albums as well. And and I haven't heard Antichrist Superstar for a while. Um, I kind of yeah, I I got that album when I was like I want to say. 16 17 um picked it up from a music festival and yeah yeah i've, I've, I've loved that so i've seen him live so many times as well it's absolutely fantastic um avril oh. lavigne i've seen live as well oh, yeah <laughs> a couple of times and and oh she's amazing live <laughs> and it's, it's nice to know that like the the let go album was a sort of like gateway album for you as well because um that did bring a lot of people into the into the genre if you will, because it wasn't just sort of like, you know, it was kind of on the heavier side of things as well. So it got coverage here, obviously, in all our rock media and all that kind of stuff. And, and Skater Boy was massive, as it was everywhere. Um, complicated as well. That was another huge hit from her as well. And, it, it, you know, and it's nice to know those albums are gateway albums for a lot of yourself, especially when it comes to the sort of the, the um, female side of things as well. Because um, I'm, I'm, I'm a father of three girls. and and you know i i try and sort of get them into well i say i try to get them into music i play music in the background and kind of influence their musical taste um but they're really kind of um latching on to the sort of more female voiced uh rock and metal bands now so like yourself yeah um and like um hailstorm and um epica oh i love hailstorm (laughs) on the sort of like epic side of things epica with the cinematic and the, the um what's it symphonic is the word i'm looking for um <laughs> you know and 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 it's sort of it's great to know that now that that those those albums that were sort of around at the time and were sort of you know generally kind of like uh poo-pooed by you know the sort of like the metal fan if you will are and i've always said that these albums like lincoln park was a massive gateway album for a lot of people because like the hybrid theory album um, that brought a lot of people into the rock genre. That brought people, that brought crowds to to rock events because they crossed over from that kind of like metal side of things, but with the pop pop music, basically. Um, and yeah, pop, pop roach and stuff for another one. So that's no, it's brilliant. I love that. Excellent. Three good albums there. <laughs> cool. So, um, <laughs> well, so I've got uh, another question. What What are your um, uh, hobbies away from music so when you're not concentrating purely on like living dead gov so i know you mentioned you're sort of like looking to or you're going to be doing a clothing line um with the sort of merch side of things do you have any other like sort of hobbies or passions that you sort of like get involved in i have so many that like <laughs> <laughs> it's like hard to keep up with them all like i like to do pretty much anything creative that i can do like i do a lot of graphic design editing photography video editing i also own my own little like permanent makeup spa so i do like tattooing on eyebrows and lipstick and that kind of thing so that's more like my day job yeah i've always loved makeup artistry special effects makeup i've been modeling for over 10 years so i've always really been into fashion and beauty so that's kind of where i want living dead girl to cross over is have like its own like clothing line is because i love designing things and i love fashion so that's like like expanding the living dead girl merch line into more of a clothing line is how i can incorporate a lot of my hobbies into one no that's amazing that's amazing it's, that's what i've like I, I don't know if this was this was that a long-term plan of yours from like say before the sort of global pandemic or is that something you've kind of like developed over that time because i've i've obviously you know i've been quite fortunate to interview artists like yourself over this past year and from the beginning of the pandemic going all the way through and then watching these bands kind of evolve if you will it um, was a long-term goal for sure <laughs> okay cool so it's something like, you've always i've wanted. always wanted to do that that's amazing no it's good i mean and i'm, I'm sure you'll be good at it as well because um I, thank you <laughs> you know I, i've seen a lot of i've seen a, well, I've seen a lot i've seen a few bands sort of develop clothing lines and they've become their own entity um and i hope that happens to you as well because it's something that i love to see that creative sort of like um flair sort of branch out because you can be sort of like yeah i'm a musician but you know you're also from what you've told me you're a designer so um 
do you do all your own um like stuff for the band do you do all the designs for that or is that i do everything yeah i made our lyric videos our website all of the merch all of our social media posts like everything i always make myself <laughs> that's crazy that's crazy where do you find time I, um... <laughs> <laughs> no that's really good because well I've, now i have plenty of it <laughs> well yeah no there is that too yeah but no it's it's just crazy like it just being that kind of like you know solo um well not so well, yeah solo kind of like creative um for your uh, and you get to uphold your vision as well which is great because you're the one working on it you're the yeah, one yeah that's the thing <laughs> you know um and is that is that something you've always kind of like um had through this whole process is just that sort of like you are the sort of like say be all end all of it but do you have like are you obviously you sign off on all the sort of creative aspects yeah like living dead girl um obviously like it's a band and like everyone is everyone is like important in it obviously but when it comes down to like the creative aspect of it like it's always like my my vision my ideas yeah cool like i'm fortunate i have like really talented people to like play with and stuff but like when it comes to the actual design and writing process and stuff it comes down to my vision no that's really cool because obviously you know you said you you've recorded a whole bunch of stuff prior to this you know you finally got your album kind of together the way you wanted it as well so um and it's you know that's what a lot of people kind of like you know that when it comes to being creative they sometimes they give up certain aspects of the process um yeah and and i i know i kind of like you know i've i, I used to be a musician oh, so I, used be, I used to be in a band let's put it that way um and we recorded everything ourselves so everything we kind of did was our sound you know and and yeah you know when you try and you know we sort of experimented with bringing producers in maybe and 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 like other people to kind of comment on it but at the end of the day it was kind of like that's not what we want to sound because you know they would recommend sort of sounding you know changing the guitar sound or you know vocal styles or whatever anything like that um but then when, yeah. we, when we, we we tried it we didn't like like poo poo it straight off the bat we we just sort of like try it but it, and it wasn't us we weren't comfortable with that and uh no i applaud, yeah. i applaud you for that for having that complete control on it which is you know that is something that and and i'm sure you'll do very well out of it as well you know from the sort of the, the level of of production on these songs and you know they they should be they should pick up and hopefully gain a lot of traction for you thank you front. um but yeah um that's all i've got for you uh molly um i was just, uh yeah i just want to thank you for your time thank you for having me i appreciate it <laughs> absolutely my pleasure you have a fantastic rest of your day thank you for doing this and um yeah um have a good one good luck with everything thank you you too <laughs> thank you molly bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.